welcome. Let's welcome to the stage Bernadetta. Origami, the art of paper folding. But what if I tell you that origami may one day save your life? Now, to do so, it needs to be a, li a little bit more special than this paper crane. In fact, it needs to be at least 100 million times smaller, and it needs to be made from DNA. To understand how DNA origami works, you simply need to think about DNA as a structural material, um, say, a piece of wood. Now, we're not going to build houses from DNA, but we can nevertheless make some quite sophisticated nanostructures. The, it, it all comes down to some intrinsic properties of DNA, namely that the shape and the fold of a molecule of DNA is solely de determined by the sequence of its building blocks. Its building blocks, the so-called nucleotides, interact and pair with each other in a, in a very specific but more importantly predictable manner. So if we know the sequence of our DNA molecule, we can actually predict what kind of shape it will have. Even better, if we take several DNA molecules and mix them, the interaction between the molecules will also be governed by the same nucleotide pairing principles. So really, all we need to do is just take one molecule of DNA, add another one, staple the two together with a third one, and voila, we can begin our construction process. So what can we make from DNA? Well, how about a delivery box? In 2009, scientists developed the first 3D box out of DNA. Imagine taking one of these boxes and putting a drug inside it. Here, you have a perfect drug delivery system. In fact, in 2012, scientists used similar, DNA, similar um, origami principles to deliver the first cancer-targeting molecules to tumors inside living mice. And it's not only delivery boxes that you can make, DNA biosensors that can bind and recognize pathogen proteins, and DNA scaffolds that help cellular proteins to fold correctly are all being developed as we speak. Now, obviously, medical applications are very important, but I really hope that no one in the audience will ever be at a point in your life where you need to use them yourself. So why should you still care about DNA or a gun? Well, Companies like IBM are now exploring DNA origami to develop new microchips that are found in all of our electronic devices. Because DNA can fold into predictable scaffolds, it may be used to assemble nanoparticles on microchips that are just six nanometers in size, something that the current technologies are not very good at doing. So the next time you see an origami, remember, there's a little bit of science in every art form. Thank you for listening. Perfect timing there. So thank you, Bernadetta. Let's go over to the judges. Uh, who's going to start? Let's start with John, seeing as the other two are furiously scribbling away. Uh, I was uh, paying attention to your talk so much, Bernadetta. I didn't even think of a good question. But tell me, can we make even more wonderful things if we start combining <laughs> proteins with DNA? Oh, yes. So oh. this, uh, <laughs> yes, we can make so many things from, uh, from DNA. So in fact, actually, so just using DNA as a as for example, for drug delivery vehicle, you can make from DNA various shapes, shapes, but those shapes are quite simple. So you have squares, you have triangles. The first DNA origami that was actually made was made of smiley face, which was on the cover of Nature magazine. But if you couple these DNA molecules with some proteins, for example, now you can make very sort of, you can create neat tricks. So for example, if you want to deliver some kind of drug to specific organ in your body, you might add to the delivery box a protein that specifically targets a receptor on that, that is on the cells of that organ. And so you can now directly target that organ with this delivery box. That's one example. So what about RNA? So that seems to form even more fancy structures than DNA. So what about the potential for using RNA? Um, so I haven't heard about RNA origami technology, but that's not to say that you couldn't use something like this. So, um, for example, um, from RNA, intricate RNA structures, often called aptomers, um, are, are 
RNA folds that can bind with high, um, with high stringency and high specificity to certain proteins. So you can develop various shapes of RNA that can allow you to, uh, to bind to certain proteins. Also, for example, um, RNA as such, um, the one, this one kind of, we always, when we work with RNA, and I work on virus that contains a genome that has RNA, I know how to how many uh, problems I, I, I come across that RNA is not as stable molecule as DNA is. So that m might be one issue why you would prefer um, to work with um, RNA. Although there are some exceptions, you can add modifications on RNA molecule as well to make it more um, um, make it more stable, and that's how, for example, certain vac vaccines that use RNA um, are being used. So you talk about the drug delivery systems and things like that. Yes. Um, is this all like personalized medicine as well? Would it be individual specific, or are they you know, just across everybody? Um, so it, it hasn't been yet d uh, developed as a personalized medicine, uh, but what kind of a personalized, let's put it that way, application you could use DNA origami for would be to detect um, so-called SNPs um, in certain, uh, in genomes. So SNPs, um, which stand for s small, single nucleotide polymorphisms, which are basically small changes in DNA, um, in DNA that are specific to, say, say a specific individual and you can um, and they are often associated with certain diseases so you can arrange make dna structures that can bind specifically dna sequences with those smps in them and that we detect whether whether a person has this smp or not yeah. Great. well thank you so much bernadetta for delivering an excellent talk <laughs>